Hey everybody, it's Rebecca, and as you can see, I'm at the storage unit. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the storage unit. Then after that, I will have my storage story and how I got here and where I was before. And then I'll follow it up with a couple of different categories of different topics of tips that I wish I would have known before or that I would recommend to somebody who's thinking about getting a storage unit. Thanks so much and hope you enjoy. Okay, here we are. I have a nice easy entrance and that's actually something that I'm thinking of now I didn't put in my tips. So I realized that there was something that I did not include in my tips, unfortunately, which will follow, but that is the location of your actual unit from the entrance of the building because we're obviously carrying in a lot of stuff, um, whether you're using the cart provided by the storage unit or you're carrying it in by hand. Today I used the storage unit cart to lug in those two bags, that bin, those two bins, and these two boxes. Like I piled it high, I hate making multiple trips. So it's really awesome that my unit is literally one turn and then in. So that's just a quick tip that I can't believe I forgot to put that in my tips, which will be coming up after this portion of the video. So here is the tour. This is the, don't judge my Taco Bell bag. That's from the other day. <laughs> um, this is where I like have a workstation. So I organized all of the supplies that I need, um, extra shipping supplies, extra shipping supplies under here and business thank you cards and just other, you know, like big poly bags, normal size poly bags, extra boxes. Um, I also used to keep when my son would come like toy, like I have a Mickey left here, but he, and one of his balls, but, um, you know, I would keep toys here for him so that when we were here, he would kind of like play right in this general area while I was doing everything I needed to do. So I'm not going to go through all the various storage, um, shipping supplies and things. I'm sure you know what you need for your business. Over here is like the oddball sized items. So shoes, bags, things I should have probably never bought. Um, but so that's that area right here is just extra bags. I just, I'm a person that keeps bags. It's really hard to get rid of bags. So they're here if you need them. And then here's where the inventory system starts. I'll do a separate tour about inventory, but just so you can see, I do have a lettered bin and then inside is numbers A, one through 40, B, one through 40, C1 through 40, etc. And so that's 10 bins on there. Some are bins, some are Ikea bags, some are open, some are closed. It is what it is, but it works well. Um, I can't decide what I like best, but we'll talk about that in the inventory system. So that's that side. Then um, over here starts my double letters. So that's AA, BB, CC, DD, and then it goes up. So this is the next set then I started numbers and for whatever reason because I didn't have this shelf so numbers start back here so I've got 1 through 25 26 through 50 etc these are in groups of 25 so that's all of that that goes up to 4.99 then yeah I know it's stupid 500 starts back over here and I go up to 699 and that's where I cut it off. That's more than enough. Then over here is a new shelf that I just put up and this is all of my boutique items. So clothing and stuff is at the top and then I'm starting to get into the swimwear in those middle shelves. And then down here is what's left of a bulk wholesale order that I did, which was like um, store overstock and shelf poles. So it was mostly Macy's and things like that. Um, so they're named brands, but they're not, you know, super good brands. It did have some good brands, but so that's what's left of that. We could talk about that another day. This is a random bin where I was trying out a different numbering system. So we can talk about that in the future. And then this is where I just have a lot of multiple quantity items because I like this drawer set. So the only thing that's not multiple quantity are the ties, but I have these bibs that I got, maternity shorts, it's 
maternity swimsuits, Victoria's Secret bras, bathing suits, <clears throat> and then some other multiple quantity things. So that's listed inventory. Then we get into unlisted inventory. And so these bins here vary. So one of them is for things that are going to eventually get sold back to Style Encore. One bin is for Christmas items. Another bin is for Halloween items. And I think that bin is empty. Then these are, these are and these are um, bins of unlisted inventory that goes to my photographer. So I usually give her four bins a week and it usually is 70 items a week. So as you can see here, I keep track of it so I know how many is in each bin. So um, A bin has 17, so I need three more there. This one has 20, this one has 20, this one has 10. So 20, 20, 20, and 10, that'll be her 70. And then these are in prep for next week. So I usually like fill this up as early as I can so that way I know I'm ready for her and then then I would get started on these. And so I try to have, I would ideally like to have more unlisted inventory so that in case for some reason I can't go sourcing, I have plenty for her. Um, but this is where I keep it. And she has a key to the storage unit and she comes and she takes these bins home with her to work on. And we'll go over in my um, hiring help series about everything she does for me. <clears throat> but she'll take these bins home with her She'll bring home, bring home <laughs> to the storage unit the bin she was working on, and she'll actually put the items away where they belong. And I have some tips on that in the future. And this is a step stool for her. And then those would be ready for her for next week. And then this is just like a little bin I usually keep on top when it closes of like when she'll say, I need more thank you cards, I need more forms to list, I need bags, whatever kinds of supplies she needs. I leave that for her in the bin and that's how things go back and forth. And then this <clears throat> really cool, awesome rolling rack I just found by the side of the road. Hustler style. So found that. Somebody was throwing it out. I didn't really spend too much time like cleaning, cleaning it, but I did wipe it off. <laughs> and um, it's nice because if I do have to hang some things, I can hang them here. Sometimes I'll hang a bag there and just throw the items I'm pulling for shipping into the bag, like hanging right there. Um, but it's just a good workspace to roll around. And right now I have lots of stuff to put away. I've got boutique items to put away. I've got items that I took photographs of to put away. I have items that are going to go to Style Encore to put away. I have items for Tiff, uh, for my photographer to put away and this is just random other stuff. So that is the storage unit and up next will be my storage unit story and then all of my tips if you are considering getting a storage unit or considering moving storage units or upgrading your storage unit and if you have other questions send them to me. I mean, I guess you could put them in the comments on YouTube. I haven't gotten that many there yet, so I don't really know what to do with them there, but, um, or send them to me on Instagram, whichever way is good for you. But I'd love to be of more help if this is a topic that interests you more. All right. Thanks so much. Um, I'm going to talk about the storage unit. So I think what I'll first do is start with my situation and what happened, why I got it, what I have, where I was, where I am now. Then I'll go into thoughts and tips and tricks with some various categories that I thought of yesterday. So I got a storage unit because my inventory was growing. I had it in a few different areas of the house. And I think when I do an inventory system video, I'll go over exactly how that evolved. But basically, I had it some in my guest room closet stacked up in bins and it was getting difficult because I couldn't have shelves in there. And so I had to move every single bin every single time in order to get to the bottom bin and that was getting annoying. I did have some in the garage on shelves where I didn't have to do that and I could just take off the correct bin off the shelf. 
and having it in two different places was getting confusing, getting a bit much. Also, I don't like to go past a certain area of my house when my little guy is napping for fear that he will wake up and then I won't get anything done. And I'm sure it's just all in my head that I'm actually making that much noise going in and out of the door to the garage from the house. But I don't care. Nap time is my time too. And I don't want to wake up the dragon. So I... Um, just don't go in that side of the house <laughs> when he's napping. So that got to be a pain in the neck. Also, I think the inventory was growing a lot. I was expanding and so I think it was kind of starting to like freak my husband out a little bit. He's pretty much a super neat organized guy and just knowing that I had all this business stuff that he didn't really understand or know what it was, but he just knew there were bins everywhere and sometimes piles and like it just really messed with him and I don't blame him you know he always says like this is our house this is not your business office and when you work from home it's both I'm more okay with that than he is and so in kind of like a big giant fight about all of the business stuff and all of these things I basically just like in a day I had been thinking that I wanted to get a storage unit um, but like in a day I just in my car, moved all the bins a couple of times, a couple of trips over to a storage unit. Now, just to get it out of the house while he was gone at work. So it was like, you don't want this here? Fine, it's gone, it's out of here, whatever. I can make it work no matter what. I can pay this bill for this storage unit no matter what. Like, whatever hardship you husband throw at me, <laughs> because <laughs> you don't like this business at the time. Um, you know, I'm going to figure it out because that's who I am. So I got the storage unit, moved everything over there in like multiple, multiple trips with my car. I had to buy more bins. I had to just really get everything squared away. I had to buy shelves. At first I didn't have shelves, but then I started to build up the shelves. And um, I got a 10 by 15 climate controlled storage unit about 15 minutes away from my house. 10, 12, 15, depending on the lights and whatever. And so every day I would go back and forth this 10 to 15 minute trip to there to get my items. And at that time, so this is about two years ago, a year and a half ago. I, I should have paid attention to when exactly it was, but, um, and so my little guy was more like a year and a half old. So he was walking and everything, but I would have to take him. This was before he started his little school. So after we got all of our morning routine stuff out of the way, I'd pack him up in the car. We'd go drive to the storage unit. I'd have something for him to play with. He would fart around and play while I pulled all my items or organized or did whatever I needed to do while I was there. We'd pack everything up. Um, and then I take everything home and pack and ship and get it out. So every day we had to leave the house. Every day I had to bring my little guy with me. Every day I had to pull the right items, watch him, <laughs> make sure he had something to keep him busy. So it was an ordeal, you know, it was a whole thing. Um, and so while it was great because I did end up liking not having all of the stuff in my house, um, it did present some challenges and I'll go over those in a minute. Um, but you know, so I had this storage unit 15 minutes away. Then like 2018, I really decided storage units are going up all over our area. So there became more options. And when I looked at storage units to select that one, I did compare prices to like two or three places and the ones closer to my house were too expensive at the time. I was scared to it, you know, to do like a $200 a month payment. Like I wanted it to be more like a hundred. So the one that I ended up with, again, I'll talk about costs in a bit, but that was like, I think 121 it started out as. And so I, I felt like I could handle that because I was having consistent sales. You know, I was paying myself a consistent amount. I had employees at that time, or not employees, but helpers at that time. And so I felt like I could take on that expense. But on the trade-off that it was 15 minutes away, and on the trade-off that I had to pack up the little guy and bring him with me and deal with all of that. So 
that's where I was. Then 2018, at some point, I forget exactly when, I said, you know what? I need to really laser focus on saving time, saving efficiency, saving, you know, gas, saving minutes, you know, doing things smarter, working smarter, not harder, all of that. And I really started to analyze everything that I did for the business and when I was doing it and why I was doing it and how I was doing it. And so part of that resulted in it's worth it for an extra $60 to get the storage unit closer to the house. And so I got the same size storage unit at a place closer to my house. It's now four minutes away from the house. And most of the time I go before anybody's awake. And so that allows me to be much more efficient and quick when I'm at the storage unit because I'm not having to have one eyeball on Geo and one eyeball on what I'm trying to do. I don't have to worry about having a lot of things for him to do because he doesn't come with me there that often. Um, the location obviously is quicker to get to and there's you know some positives and minuses that I'll go over when I talk about the specific categories but basically I'm much happier with the decision now to be closer to home and like kind of the timeline that I do it in which is being efficient when I'm by myself before anybody wakes up rather than with Gio with me so and now I've been there a little over a year so that's good. I don't think that I would make any changes to the current setup that I have. I've got plenty of capacity. Like even though when I show you the storage unit, it looks really full, each bin isn't completely full all the time. And that rotates, you know, sometimes the U bin is more full or less full. Sometimes the one through 50 bin is more than more or less full. So um, that's inventory system. But so I've got room in there. Um, I don't have a lot of sorting, moving around kind of workspace room, which is unfortunate. So perhaps if I could, you know, stomach it in the future, I would get one next door to me or across from me where it could be more of a workspace set up with things. And then the other one's just straight has the items. That might be something. I don't think it would make sense to necessarily get a bigger unit and have to break everything down and move it. Like, I think that would be kind of asinine. Um, I know that they have some bigger ones, but in my head, I don't, I don't think that that makes sense. I think I need different space, not more space. I don't know that I want to have a lot more items. <laughs> I almost wish I have less items that sell quicker than more items that just take up space. So that's my general story. I think I'll cut it here and then start talking about some of the topics. Okay. I'm in traffic. So I'm going to look at my notes here. So location. So things to think about. These are all just going to be thoughts and tips. Basically. Um, you need to, if you're considering getting a storage unit or if you're considering changing storage units, obviously a big thing is location. So thinking about how far it is away from your house, um, is it on your way to other errands? Is it on the way to your kids' schools? Is it on your way to work? If you're, you know, if you also have a, a full-time job, um, is it on your way to the grocery store that you go to or to your post office so that you're kind of making an efficient route and not going completely out of your way um, to go to the storage unit? Is it going to fit in with your timeline of the day? to go to that route. Like, are you going in one direction, but then later you have to go the complete other direction and then you have to go back the other direction, things like that. I mean, just try to be efficient with where you're going, why you're going there and when you're going there. Um, is it somewhere that you want to be? <laughs> like, is it in an area of town that's okay for you to be in at the time that you would be going there? You know, I go early in the morning. I don't always like it when I'm there in the dark, but I'm not in an area where I'm scared to be there. I just don't like it. It's you know, it irks me. Um, but I live in a good area. So for me, it's not a problem, but maybe for you where you have to go to a storage unit, it's not in a good area or some such thing. So just think about when you're going to go and is it okay to be there before dark, after dark? Um, does it cost you a lot of extra time to get there and back? So aside from location, remember once you have a storage unit, you are no longer a home-based business. You are now a business with a warehouse. 
in, in essence. And so, you know, it's gonna, you have to factor that in that you have to get there and back. You have to pick your items there. It's not like when you're home and you sell something and you can go run and grab it and be done with it and then run and grab it and be done with it. That's what I used to do. I used to pack as I went so that way I didn't have so much to do all at once and that was good for me. But now I can't do that. Um, and is there traffic? Haha, I'm sitting in traffic right now. Is there traffic when you're trying to get there? If you're trying to make, you know, a 10 a.m. pickup, because that's when your post person comes to your house and you're trying to go there at nine and there's traffic and whatever and you have to go on a highway I don't know um you know is that gonna affect it because I think it would obviously be better to pick a different place if there's another option for you than to do the one that may have a lot of traffic at certain times so that's all I have on location then I'll go into the actual facility so the first place I went to, you did your keypad to get in through the gate. So there was that security. Then you could just walk into your building and then you used a key to access your unit. And so that was one way. But so anybody could go in and out of my building once they got through the gate. Um, there was also a bathroom in the building where I had my unit which came in handy sometimes. One, when I had the little guy, and two, sometimes you gotta pee when you're working there. So that's that. Now the new place I'm at, you have to put your key code in to get into the gate to access the area. Then you have to put your key code in to get into your specific entry point for your unit, which I like. So the guy on the building on the other side can't get into my building because his thing is over there and he has a different code. So that makes me happy because you know, who knows? Anybody could be anybody. So I liked that extra added security. Also, what I don't like about the new one, but it was a trade-off, was that there's no bathroom in the actual building where my unit is. You actually have to go back through the gate, and then it's right there by the office. But what I do like is that you have to put in your key code to get into the bathroom, and then no one else can get in once somebody's in there. Or the other one sometimes that door didn't even lock and I'm like somebody could just barge right into me you know into the bathroom so that didn't feel safe this one feels safer but it's more of a pain in the neck to get to but at this point when I go I'm not usually there for that long of a time where I need to use the facilities I don't usually bring my little guy who's now potty trained so he wouldn't really need to use the facilities but it's nice to know it's there if I need to get to it and that it's safer to access Anyway, um, is it clean? So I feel like both of them are pretty clean. I would say probably the second one that I'm in currently is a little more clean than the first one, but both actually had really good guys that, you know, you always see around maintaining. And so that was good. So I liked that. Um, the first one, I don't remember that they had any particular time that you could get in. My second one had certain access times. So you want to find that out because I had to prove that I was a business in order to get 24 hour access to the second one where I'm at now. Um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get in till six, which most days I don't go before six anyway, but sometimes I do. And so that would have not worked out for me if I'm planning to go at 5:30 every morning and get my items and then they don't let me in because I'm not a business. So I was able to show that I'm a business and get the 24 hour access, which is good, but it's something you should ask about if this is something you're considering. The staff, just going along with it being clean, like are they nice, are they helpful? Um, you know, I know the guy by name, actually I knew them both by name at each place, but I feel like the second one, there's more people, they're more attentive, they say hi, you know, when you call and there's an issue, if there's an issue, they are always right on top of it. Um, so just get to know what is the deal with the staff. You don't want to have a horrible situation now that you've moved all your items there and you're locked into this place. Climate control or not climate control. So depending on where you live, how much you can afford, obviously it costs more for climate control. You want to figure out what makes sense for you. For me, I'm in Florida. You know, everything is stored folded in a plastic resealable bin in a bin not all the bins have lids or not or some of them are ikea bags and so 
I wanted climate control. And when I'm working hard in there, I don't want to be sweating my bejesus off. So definitely climate control is the way I went. Cost me a little more, but it feels good. Also too, I think it's then safer because you're on the inside of the building. You're not on the outside of the building. So I like that. Lighting, I just thought of this. So most of them, at least mine, had uh, motion activated sensor lights. Well, the first one, I never had a problem. You walked in, it went on, fine, fine. It's sometimes hard to see what you're doing all the way in the back of your storage unit. So I usually would have to bring the bin forward to the edge, to like the hallway area, so that I could see in the bin of what I was getting. Um, I've thought about hanging some magnetic lights because there's nowhere to plug in. So you have to have like battery operated stuff. And I just haven't really made it a priority or found anything that was fantastic so whatever but it is sometimes hard to see back there the second place when I first moved in I would go in the back of the unit and like by the time I found my bin and pulled it out to go to the front the light had turned off and when I was moving in I had stuff everywhere I was organizing things I was like there were bins everywhere and Ikea bags everywhere and I was doing inventory at the same time and it was just crazy and the stupid light kept shutting off. <laughs> like, had to trip over bins to, like, get back out to wave the thing to make the motion for the light to come back on. And I was like, finally I called. I'm like, listen, I don't know what you need to do, but somebody's got some kind of timer on this thing, and you need to up the time. Like, this is crazy town. Like, I, I can't, I'm wasting so much time just turning the lights on and off over here. So he came, you know, within 10 minutes and got on the ladder and monkeyed around with something and made the sensor stay longer and that was awesome because like he reacted right away he did exactly what I needed him to do and then it worked fine from there so staff just something to keep in mind um, as far as these motion sensor lights um, bathroom oh rolling carts so if you don't have any of your own which I don't um, but you're loading and unloading bins, most storage units have, at least the two that I did, have carts that stay by the door that you can use to load and unload. If you have a really busy active storage unit, <laughs> you may not be able to get to it. So it's something to keep in mind because if there's a lot of people moving in and out that day, I'm just happy that most of the time I don't have a lot to load and unload every single day. It's a couple of Ikea bags or two or three bins and so I just kind of make it work. Or you can go to another entrance, borrow their bin, um, their cart, and then come back. But um, it's something to keep in mind if they do or don't provide those for you, if you can or can't get them. You know, like if somebody's like a cart hog, <laughs> which I've had to deal with those where they're just gonna like use it as a little desk and seating area in their storage unit while they're working. And I'm like, um, I have a crap ton of stuff that I have to unload. Like this is not your chair, this is the freaking cart. So again, make nice with your neighbors. Ugh, something to keep in mind. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop it and then pop back on for the next topic. Okay. The next topic is time management. So some of these will be obvious and then some of these maybe not to you obvious. To me, they weren't obvious at first. And so it was kind of like a learning lesson of figuring out how to now manage having a second location for your home-based business. Um, so will you be going alone? Will you be going with kids? That's gonna be a big deal because it obviously takes a lot longer to get there, get your things, and get back home when you have kids with you than when you don't. So, I mean, I could go and pull 10 or 20 items, go to the storage unit I'm at now, and be back in 25 minutes by the time it takes me to get there, get all the items, get back in the car, and get home. That's good, I think. If I had Geo with me, that would probably take an hour, you know? I mean, because you have to keep them in line, give them something to do, make sure they're not doing something they're not supposed to do, you know, snacks, water, toys, whatever. And again, everybody's kids are different ages, you, everybody has a different life, everybody's different. So, you know, this is just my thought. My little guy is three now, 
when I started doing storage unit stuff, he was between one and one and a half. So I've been dealing with toddler stages of a little active boy. So, you know, that's different. If you have a baby, you can just stick them in one of those little boppy chairs, you know, or like, you know, strap them in the kangaroo pouch. You'll be golden. But, um, you know, if your kids are already in school or whatever. So because I go when everybody's asleep, um, I can go and come back very quickly, be very efficient and get everything I need to done quickly at the right time of day for me. So it's just something to think about before you actually get a storage unit. If you're thinking about it, I would kind of plan it out in your head. Like this is when I would go, this is how long I think it's going to take me, you know, allow yourself to practice that schedule a little bit. Um, and just kind of sink into and integrate that into your life and see if it really makes sense because you could think that you're going to get there but what if you can't actually get there um and then like the random thing like when your kid's sick or whatever i mean sometimes you know i have one day handling time on ebay and there's been a couple of times where i'm like well i'm gonna have to deal with those late shipments because i'm not getting there today i'm not going to drag my sick kid out to go do this and there's not there's no coverage <laughs> there's no you know assistant for that so or at least in my particular world at the moment so that you know sometimes you have to suck it up um, so those are just some of the things to think about with that um, things to keep your kids busy if you do need to bring them so like geo has a couple of things there just random silly stuff and then sometimes they let them play with like stickers or whatever and then sometimes what we were doing for a while was we take his little suitcase that he has those little rolly things for kids and he would pack up his trains in there or he would pack up his toolbox and I would tell him like oh my god mommy needs you to fix the storage unit something's broken I need your help and so he would come with his tools and like bang all around things <laughs> like screwdrive things or whatever and he thought he was helping me that way which was awesome that kept him busy the toolbox stuff or the trains because by the time he sets them all up though that you have to keep this in mind by the time he sets them all up then I'm like okay I'm all done we gotta go and then he gets mad when you have to break them all down but that was a lifesaver to keep him busy while I was there pulling my stuff um, I also recommend if you're there <sighs> Try, try not to actually, if you don't have to, pack the items there. Like, just pick them, just pull them out of your bins, and then take them home and pack them up. Because I just always found that I made mistakes and, like, would switch things sometimes or just make a mistake in some way when I shipped at the storage unit when I had my little guy there. It was too many distractions. When I was at home, I was a little more calm, and I... I could double check my work and make sure everything was fine. I didn't have as many distractions where I stopped what I was doing and then put the wrong package in the wrong thing. And so I felt like that made me calmer and I made less mistakes when I actually packed them up at home. When will you go? Condense the times to go. So like when I first got the close one, I was like, this is great. It's so close. I can go for a little bit, do what I need to do. Then if I need to go back later, I can go back later. It's no big deal. And then I realized like sometimes it's good to get something done when you can get it done, right? Because that may be your only time to get it done and it is what it is. And then other times it's better to condense everything down. You're going to go back again tomorrow because you're going to have more packages to ship tomorrow. And so I don't need to unload the things I got at the bins today because I know I can do it tomorrow morning. It would be stupid since I've already been to storage today, completed, sto completed shipping to go back again today when I'm done with the bins and drop off the unlisted, you know, my unlisted items just for the sake of dropping them off and getting them out of my car. Like it's another four minutes, another four minutes, another 10 minutes to get it in and out of the car. It doesn't make sense. I'm going to be there tomorrow anyway. I'll just do that tomorrow when I'm already going for shipping. So thinking about shaving off a few minutes here and there of wasted time by condensing your trips and really thinking ahead of, again, operating with two places now, what needs to go there? What needs to come from there? What do you need to get done while you're there? what do you need to get done when you're home? So, and that kind of leads into my next thing is, which is what tasks do you have to do at which place? I'm now doing all my sorting at storage. Instead of going to the bins, 
bringing it into my house, sorting it because I could do it at night or in the morning or whenever I have time, then putting it back in my car, bringing it to storage and, and having it sorted there so that I'm not keeping all this unlisted stuff at my house was wasteful of time and minutes and just it was no good so when I realized that now if I can I usually dr either drop it when I'm done at storage or now I have bins in my car where I when I'm putting the stuff from the bins the Goodwill outlet into my car I sort it then that way it's already sorted and so all I have to do when I go back tomorrow to storage unit is bring those bins in and transfer the stuff so again just thinking about every part of your process and is it maximizing the things that you're already doing, the places where you are, the time it's taking to get tasks done. Um, this is all stuff that I could have never foreseen in the beginning. It wasn't, I'm a learn by doing kind of person, so it wasn't until I started doing it that I realized all of these extra circumstances and things that happen and come up. So that's really the whole point of why I'm making this video because obviously anybody could say think about where it is think about how much it costs do you have consistent sales to cover the amount that you're gonna buy blah 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 like yes you need to think about those things but here's all the stuff from somebody who's actually going back and forth to and from the storage unit with a little kid or whatever and here's all the things that I didn't think of initially that I'm sharing with you I hope that by me having sat here and thought about all of this <laughs> and like, okay, what's the issue there? What's the issue there? What could I change? What did I change? And sharing that with you, that that's actually the stuff that helps you save time, save energy, save your brain power. And some of this will be of use to you. Fingers crossed. Let me know. Um, that was it for time management. I just got, some. okay. So now we're going to talk about cost. So obviously you want to check around if you're lucky enough to have multiple storage unit opportunities in your area um, you want to go and check out all the prices and see what the different offers are a lot of them have like different promotions that they run one month free when you sign up or whatever some some of them have referral things so if you know anybody that needs a storage unit you can get some cash back for making referrals um, Ooh, I should see if I can make referrals for my storage unit maybe they'll give me money but it's a franchise probably I don't know we'll see that might be cool anyway um, so the monthly fee is the monthly fee and then there's tax at least there's tax for us and there's insurance but I didn't know this at first at the first storage unit the whole time I was there I did not know this and I paid it the whole time and I was so upset I paid the insurance because obviously I want to pay for the insurance and they make you but if you have homeowner's insurance, you can bring in your paper from your homeowner's insurance and then they use that and then you don't have to pay for insurance. Oh, uh, so that was a, that saved me like $14 a month on this second one. So that was glorious. So big tip there if you don't know that, cause I didn't know. Um, now they always raise the rates. So no matter what you sign up at, I would just in your head, know are you going to be comfortable with paying another $20 a month another $40 a month I kind of planned in my head for 50 because I figure this is long term I'm going to be there a while I'm not going to probably make any major changes to my storage unit needs in the next little while and so every few months they raise the rate like it just happened, it happened at the first place it happened at the second place so you can do about it you know I'm not willing to move all that stuff again because oh, I don't think I mentioned this before the second storage unit the one I have now I did rent a truck and my husband did help me load everything in to move storage units that was crap <laughs> that sucked like big time it had to be done and I have an SUV but I mean these are bags and ba Ikea bags and bags and bins and bins and bins and we had to get like a flatbread whatever thing from Home Depot or whatever and it rained that day and we had to cover it with a tarp and he was not a happy camper helping me but he always refers to that when I say you don't support my business <laughs> he's like do you remember the time that I moved all your shit that's that was what was the supportive 
me. So anyway, if you ever have to move them or you have a lot at home and then you have to move it there, think about the cost of that because I had to rent the truck. We wanted to do it in as quick a time as possible. So that's another cost, moving everything to the storage unit. Then once you have it there, if you're starting fresh, you may need to buy a lot of stuff. You may need to buy hundreds of dollars of shelving if you don't already have it. Um, so, and, and what I could have done, like when I did buy a lot of the shelves for the second storage unit, they were on sale and I should have gotten a couple more and just left them in the corner because then when I did need them again, just recently and I had to buy more they weren't on sale so that was kind of a bummer um, but again I didn't want to put out the money then so so shelving like I have a little garbage pail at mine I had to buy because I didn't have any garbage pails I had a table but you might want a table or some sort of work area or workspace um, to you know so that you can do stuff there and pack up your packages or whatever um, I have a couple like plastic organizer drawers. Now those I had, you might need to buy them, going to Target, going to Walmart, wherever, Ikea, and getting things like that. Um, you might need more bins or more Ikea bags. Those Ikea bags, even though they're cheaper than bins, they add up. So those are some costs that you should be thinking about when you're making your plans to determine if this is something that is gonna be the right thing for you? Is it the right time for you? You need to have some of these funds available to set up the storage unit once you have it. Um, oh, watch the prices. Like as you're doing research about where to go for your storage unit, watch the prices because they change based on occupancy and demand. And so when I first checked my current storage unit, when I was getting the old storage unit, they were too expensive. They were over $200 for the same unit. Then when I decided, okay, I really should relook at this and I was willing to pay the 200, it ended up, it was like 170 or 180. So I think now I'm paying 192 or 196 a month, which is the storage unit cost with tax, with no insurance, because I have it. Um, that's with a built-in, like they already raised it once on me and for a 10 by 15 pretty sure and that I just have that auto pay every month um so be, I would watch it over a couple of weeks a couple of months unless you kind of know what the general pricing is and you know when you first start looking that it's a rock bottom price then snag it but otherwise I would be willing to wait it out a little bit and see because once units become available then they want to get people in there and so then they will drop the prices down um and like i said before promotions or anything that they have going on like that climate control is obviously more expensive than not climate control so depending on where you are and how you store everything you can decide what's good for you i would also like on size i'm in the same size i basically had the same setup in the old one and in the new one give or take like two shelves. So plan for growth so that you don't have to move it all again because that would be a pain in the neck. But at the same time, don't pay for stuff that you're not going to use. So I think it, it's based on the size you are now, the size you think you're going to be reasonably within an X period of time. Because if you could just get a small one, a 10 by 10 or whatever, then you would save money rather than getting a 10 by 15 or a 10 by 20. But if you know that the reason why you're getting this storage unit is because the next year and two years, you're trying to double, triple your listings or whatever you're doing and really like make a huge level up, then go and get the bigger one if you can handle the nut every month because it would be stupid to move it all again, especially because you don't know what's gonna be available when you do wanna move. And so you might have to hike it all the way across the stupid thing and you have to rent a truck anyway or whatever. So um, weigh that out for yourself and what your personal needs are. Because like I said, for me, I really don't want to move anytime soon. Like that would be awful. But I hated moving it the first, I hated moving it the first time and I hated moving it the second time to where I am now. I'd be really pissed if I have to move it again. Uh, keys, 
there's like special keys and I, you need to buy one. When I bought them the first time, then I got to keep them for the second time, so I didn't have to buy it again, and it came with two, so I have a key, and then when I talk about my photographer, I'll fill you in on what she does, but she has a key, and I think I still have a spare key. I don't know how I ended up with three, but um, so you need keys, gotta buy that. And I already did supplies. Okay, so that is it for costs that I could think of right now. Next topic is organization. So I think that there's probably only so many ways you can organize it. Bins on shelves, bags on shelves, bins on bins, whatever. You may have a workspace that's bigger or smaller. You might have different sizes of shelves or whatever. But I mean, generally speaking, we're trying to keep items in there. Um, the way I have it organized and I will do a tour is, you know, I have a workstation with the work supplies. I have, I guess, a couple other supplies and like random sized items like shoes and purses because I don't have a lot of them. Um, and then I start my inventory. Inventory, I have like a random shelf with just random multiple quantity inventory. More inventory, everything's in its system with um, letter and number bins and numbered bins. And then off to the side, I have my unlisted inventory. And it's good to keep that, you know, separate and out of the way. I don't put that on shelves. I could, but I don't um, because it's always moving. Some things I bring home to work on, some things I leave for the photographer to do her stuff, some things I'm just holding for maybe the season if it's a Christmas item. Um, Halloween costume, ugly Christmas sweater, or something like that. Or if it's something I'm gonna eventually take to Style Encore, or if it's in a donate pile, or try to sell it on Facebook pile. So I mean, I have subcategories of unlisted things. Um, and really that's all there is. So as long as you kind of come up with a way that works for you of how you're gonna organize it, I don't really have too much else to talk about on that other than Plan it out in your head. Make sure you have enough room before you get the storage unit. You know, think of what you want to keep there and why, um, how you're going to use it. And then um, just again, you know, we'll talk about inventory system in another video, but plan for your growth as far as how you're organizing it. Because if you have one system that's working for you now and you have 200 items, but your plan is to get to 2,000 items, you're gonna need a different system, and if you have a different system, you're gonna need a different, possibly organizing method. So, FYI on that. Um, next thing is unforeseen circumstances. That's what I called it. Uh, item questions. So, did not anticipate this, don't know what I was thinking or why I didn't think about it, but when people message you with questions, if you can answer it off the cuff, then great, good for you. But if you have to go back to the item because you don't remember, or if you have a photographer, she did it, you never really saw the item except for when you bought it and who the heck remembers that. Um, or another measurement that you didn't take or something, there's a typo and now you're not sure what's the right thing. I've had that happen because I have a photographer and prepper and then I have a lister. So sometimes a mistake happens in translation between all of them and I don't know where the mistake happened. I didn't do the actual work and so I have to go and check in order to answer the question. That drives me crazy because I, I can't just run there and go check. Like it's not like it's in my guest room where I could just be like, oh, hold on, let me just go look it up and see. So I usually tell them like basic measure, if it's a measurement, I usually like basic measurements are in the listing. Thanks so much for your interest in this item. All items are stored, ready for shipping at my warehouse and I won't be going there until shipping tomorrow. If you need this immediately, hopefully someone else has it for you. If not, I can let you know tomorrow if you're still interested. And I try. I kind of want them to be like, no, I need it now because then that way I don't have to check. Because you know what happens is I go to the storage unit and I forget to check the thing. So I'm doing my shipping, I'm doing my sorting, I do everything under the freaking sun, and then I forget to look up these things that I needed to look up. And then I get back home and I'm like, ah. And you know, half the time, they don't buy it anyway because the measurement's wrong or this or that or they just forget or whatever, they're jerks. <laughs> You know, it's like, I, I try to be very nice. I love all my customers and I'm, I try to be very nice with them, but sometimes it is difficult because it's like, once you put an item through your system, 
and like all of it's kind of happened, it's just so hard to go back and like uncog yourself in the system. Like it just, it's a monkey wrench or whatever. So I, so think about how you would handle questions about your items. If you're somebody that doesn't do measurements up front for whatever reason, and you measure it only if somebody asks, that is probably gonna be a big problem. Mucho problemos on that one, because I don't know what you'd do. You'd be running there every Tuesday. And if you can, then great, but I can't, so that does not work for me. Um, pulling items, putting items away, hello. So if you're home and you take pictures at home, then you have to bring everything to the storage unit and put it away. And depending on your inventory system and how you handle your bins, that could be more or less time consuming. I have some tips and tricks that I've just recently figured out that I could do in another video that's helped me save a ton of time um, on putting the items away. But just keep in mind that, okay, I took all these pictures, I did 50 items or whatever. Now I've got to take them from here, bring them to the storage unit, put them in their various bins so that when they sell, I can grab them and ship them. Something to think about because it does, I mean, it can add... 10 minutes to your week, it could add 20 minutes to your week, it could add two hours to your week, it just depends on how many items you're doing and how you set it up. But I do have some future time saving ideas on that. Um, pulling items for shipping, so obviously you have to allow yourself time to go to the storage unit in time to do your shipping, to pull all your items and then ship them out. So we've already talked about that. Um, logistics on when to print your labels, so yeah. If it's in your plan, like I'm gonna go to the storage unit on the way to drop the kids off at school or on the way home to drop the kids off at school, let's just say, but then your post office is over there, you should really print out your labels first, then go pick up your items and pack them up and then go drop your kids off and then go to the post office or whatever that works out to be. But just keep in mind, it would be silly to go get the items, go home, pack them up, then go back out to the post office. If you have home pickup, then it doesn't matter. So there's, you know, a lot of things that can vary with that depending on your personal situation, but it's something to keep in mind how you're gonna work that out. Printing your labels. Um, when you go there versus getting packages shipped out. So I think that's the same thing. Sometimes I take home, sometimes I mail, yeah. So sometimes I take them home, sometimes I mail them out. It depends on when you go. Okay, fine. It is a bummer, I will say, when on the off chance you've lost an item, it happens. <laughs> um, so I've printed out my label, I've paid for it on eBay, let's just say, or I've used my thermal printer and so I've wasted a label and I printed it and then I go there and I can't find the item and I have to cancel the order. It doesn't happen often. But back when I was doing all my inventory and kind of checking different things and we had some handwriting issues and so items got put in the wrong bins for a little while <laughs> so there was some problems um, when that happened and I couldn't find these items I was getting so pissed because I already paid for the label I'd already printed it out I would already used the it was a pain in the neck so unforeseen um, so that's all I have for that. So let me cut it here and then I'll do a closer. Okay, so I guess my closing thoughts are just be thoughtful about your decision. It's exciting to get a storage unit. It is awesome. I love that I have a storage unit. Like, I think it's cool. I think it's it makes you feel like your business is a little more legitimate. You have somewhere to go where your items are. It's nice and pretty and organized. It makes you feel like you have an operation. Like, I dig it, I like it. Um, but there were some things that I could have done differently and so that's why I'm making all these notes and sharing all these thoughts so that hopefully you don't have to deal with any of that and you can just think about all this on the beginning side of it. If you're a thinker, planner, person, I am. And I hope that your storage unit experience goes well. Um, I mean, I would love to hear about are you thinking about it? Do you have one? Are there things you wish you would have done differently that would help the rest of the people that might read comments while I get some? Um, and after watching this video, did you get a storage unit? Like had, had you been like, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it. And then we talked about all this stuff and now you're like, okay, I'm doing it. And I'm thinking about all the things that I've talked about. Like, I would love to know. Um, I have something else. 
Can you start small then upgrade? Can you afford it consistently? Think about that. Because if, if you don't have consistent daily sales and the multiples, if you're not making hundreds of dollars a week, I would not be doing a storage unit unless you must, unless there's just no other way and you're willing to make the investment, then fine. But I would not do it unless you're like hardcore consistent, whatever. Um, and then I wrote, think about it, make plans, pros and cons, research options, set money and time aside to practice. I think that's a good idea. I did not do this, but I think it would have been good if I did because I would have gone into it knowing, okay, it's gonna take me 15 minutes to get there. It's gonna take me 15 minutes to get home. What is it like with a little guy at the storage unit? You may not know, but you can plan for the time in your day. You can think about when in the day you're gonna do it. You can think about the costs and the hidden costs and, and maybe set aside some of those you know, fees ahead, you know, ahead of time. So you have a little fund for it. So that's everything I have on the storage unit. I really hope this is helpful to someone. And if it is in any way, I would love to hear it. Tell me on Instagram at the reseller mom show. Tell me in the comments here. If you have any tips of your own, tell the other moms that in the future will be watching this video. I just want us all to help each other. I don't think people are talking about this nitty gritty stuff all the time and it's good information. I mean, I wish I had somebody that kind of laid it all out because I am a thinker planner. So I would have listened to the whole thing and been like, oh, that's a good idea. Let me figure that out. Like I would have done that. Maybe I'm just a crazy person. Maybe someone out there is also crazy like me. So I am going to pick up the little guy soon. I'll do more vlog stuff later, but I hope that this is helpful. Bye.